Hello, welcome to my studio. If you are new, welcome, and if you're returning, welcome back. I'm Julie Torrens, and what we've got out here today is my jelly plate, and we're gonna do some jelly printing. So here's my jelly my jelly plate. This is to roll my brayer off. I've got a couple of brayers, and I've got a bunch of acrylic paints. So we're just going to, as, as I use other tools and things, we'll talk about them. But I just have things that are from around my house that I think are easy to use on a jelly plate to make textures. So I'm adding a little green, and I got these paints on a deep clearance at Tuesday morning. I've had them for a while. So, you know, these are the kinds of paints I like to use on my jelly plate. So this is a really deep green, and I'm going to add to it, this is a liquid, so I'm going to shake it, some metallic gold. And it is very easy to get too much on the jelly plate. So I always recommend it's better to go less than more. So this is a nice transparent green. I like that. My jelly plate is from Ranger. I got it from Michaels and I used one of those deep discount coupons years ago. I've had this plate for at least five years. This feels like just a nice amount on the jelly plate. You don't want your brayer slipping and sliding and you don't want it too dry either. And then this is going to be one of our prettiest papers come the end. So I'm just brayering off. I'm not going to necessarily clean it. And let's start with a little texture. This is called Punchinella. And it is the remnants left over from making kind of a sequins type stuff. And I've got paper over here behind me. And... This is some paper that's craft paper that that came. It was uh, wrapping up something I got from Joanne Fabrics. So I want to avoid sliding the paper if I can. But you know what? It all comes out good. And this is just our first layer. And this is all about the layers. So let's just see what we get. Now, it never hurts to go ahead and brayer on top but I don't do it right away I do it once it's on the, so I'm not pushing the paper around okay let's see what we've got it's pretty look at that okay I'm just gonna I've got a big dry space over here so I'm sorry I'm gonna be coming and going but that's the way it goes all right I'm gonna lift up this punchinella and I'm just going to give it a press on my kind of waste paper. And then I'll just set it aside. So that kind of acts like a stencil. And I'm just getting any excess paint, which there wasn't a lot of. So I've got this cool design going. What am I going to do with it? I'm going to take my Liquitex Professional Gesso. I'm going to give it... And I did shake it. I'm going to give it a little of this. I like it because it's matte. And it shouldn't, it may, but it shouldn't like scooch around what we've got on the paper. But I am going to be gentle. I can see that the green has picked up a little bit, but that's okay. It's all pretty. So this gel plate is nine i think it's nine by eleven pretty sure let me roll this off get another sheet of paper it was getting this paper from the joann's package that inspired me to go ahead and do some jelly printing you don't want to rush pulling the paper up You'll hear people refer to a pull. It was two pulls. It was three pulls. And that just means that that's how many times they had to put a piece of paper on to get whatever design they achieved. Okay, here we go. And 
there's that one. And I like it. Setting it down. I have a big old cloth. Okay, I've got green on here. I like it. And I think I want to put on top of it either another green or maybe some blue. So let me just dig in my paints. Here's some blue. This one is called Ultramarine. I'm just going to untwist it. And pick, we'll be picking up this. Now, the first thing on the gel plate is going to be what is the topmost of your print. So the green is going to be on top of this blue. Again, I'm not rushing it because I don't want, for one thing, I don't want it all over my table, you know, but I, you know, I'm trying to not just smear everything all around, but just give it a nice even coat and not necessarily disturb what was under. Another sheet of paper. And on she goes. Now you can get these gel plates all kinds of sizes, all kinds of shapes. There's more than one company that makes them. And if anyone has bought a bad one, I'm not aware of it. I like this one very much, but I've used other brands and I like them just as well. This one is a little bit thinner than some of the others, which for one thing makes storage a little handier. And you can also use it because of its thinness in an art journal if you want to. All right, here we go. And this is picking up quite a bit, which is great. It's picking up my whole gel plate. And there. And here's this one. So off I go. You will be surprised how fast your drying area fills up. So now my plate is primarily, I would say, blue. So I'm going to pick an entirely different color. I'm going to pick this hot pink. There we go. And to this, I'm going to add some pearly pink. Let's give it a shake. like that okay and give it a roll I do have paper towels handy I do have baby wipes handy and I understand how some of you feel about baby wipes and I, I don't disagree but I have these so once I'm done with these I don't plan to buy any more it isn't a good idea to use baby wipes on your gel plate, although I know some people do and they say it's fine, but what's recommended is honestly just water. And then there's ways, look at your manufacturer directions because I'm sure they're different from brand to brand. Mine talks about conditioning it with baby oil, but again, I don't recommend it. Baby oil is a petroleum product, so maybe it'll work and maybe it won't. I've got this. It is plastic. It is soft. I'm going to be very careful not to puncture my plate, but I'm going to use this to make some designs. There. And just wipe it off here and get a piece of paper. And here we go. This is going fast, huh? It does go fast. The setup takes longer than the process or at least it feels like it maybe it isn't I see that I have wrinkles in here that doesn't bother me a single bit it really doesn't it's like I said it's all about texture texture and color all right now you can see and you can see the shimmer I like that so far None of these are duds in my mind. They're all coming out good. They need more. No doubt they need more. Okay, I've got this pink. Let's stay within the pink. And I'm going to use, uh, this is a magenta. 
and it seems like it's darker than it looks in the tube, but this is a clear tube, but it just seems like that comes out darker. And I'm going to add to that this weird one. Now, this is a really old tube that, again, I got from Tuesday morning on clearance, but the binder and the paint want to separate, but a jelly plate is a perfect place to use some paint like that. And there we go. Yeah, you don't see me using my, my Liquitex Professional on this. Nothing wrong with Liquitex Professional, but everything that I like about it doesn't really lend itself to jelly printing. It, um, it doesn't want to roll like this because it's thick and heavy, but it does hold texture, that's for sure. And if that's what you have, that's fine. I think that the Liquitex Basic is a better way to go if you're thinking about doing a uh, jelly plate project. And I'm just going to go with the pink on this. I think that looks really pretty. And we can add some texture to it on the second round. I obviously missed a little bit here. That's okay. Doesn't hurt anything. What I am going to do is I'm going to take my my brayer paper here and I'm going to pick that up there I didn't get it all but that's okay now jelly plate straighten you out a little bit but this one came out nice and smooth didn't it wow maybe because there's no texture I don't know all right let's give her a pull I think I've got it down good. Oh, I like this. Look, isn't that pretty? Down she goes. So can you guess how many we got done? Five. Five so far. Okay, I like the pink. I'm tempted to use yellow, but I think it'll make it look an awful lot like Easter. I've got some teals like this now this has one of those daubers and i've never used the dauber and this was on a clearance at a warehouse craft place that's here in town they're only open a certain days of the week and but it's, it's a cool place and then i'm going to add some of this pearly green And I think these colors will go nice with pink. Okay, Mr. Brayer, do your thing. Now, when you're choosing paper to use with your jelly print, it, almost anything will do. However, you have to be careful with real shiny stuff because the paint just may not want to stick. I would not use a food container. Like, you know how I use um, cereal boxes and things? I would not use that unless I sanded it on my jelly print. It won't hurt it, but I just don't know about the results. All right, I've got one more of these. And if there's a mixture of paint on here, I sure didn't see it, but... We're going to be picking up the rest of that pink, I believe. So get your, maybe your less favorite paints now. Somebody gifted uh, Lindsay on the Frugal Crafter some of the Arteza pouring acrylics. And she doesn't do paint pouring, but she uses that on her jelly plate and the results are just beautiful. So she's not sorry she got it, but... It just turned out to be something that works really well on the jelly plate. Okay, here we go. Okay. Looking good. Needs more, no doubt, but it's looking good. Again, so far, I'm not seeing any duds. Now, this is newsprint. And this was just some weird newspaper that got dropped off. And I just cut it up 
to use on my jelly plate. And I'm putting this right down and see what I can pick up. It's obviously a little smaller than the jelly plate. That's okay. We'll just see what we get. Could end up with a, a nice border. Now this is like a ghost print. I already took one pull from this. So maybe we'll get something. Maybe we won't. But I think we will for as much as it feels like it's trying to stick. I do want to give it a good rub. Let's do some of this. Okay. Let's see what we got. There we go. It's cleaning up the plate nice and look, can you see? Oh, it deposited some ink on there. That's okay. But look, I just think that's gorgeous. Looks kind of floral. Now these are drying pretty fast. So that's another good thing I like about jelly printing is that it does dry pretty fast. Okay, well, I'm looking at the paper, but how about some paint? I'm just leaving it as it is. I'm not washing it. I'm going to go with this kind of an apple green color. I think it's just called green, if I remember right. Green, yep. Yeah. And these little weird branded things that I have, these are all that I got from a clearance dump bin. Now this is kind of a kind of a Kelly green. I don't know how easy it's gonna ooh, quite easy. <laughs> I was gonna say I didn't know how easy it was gonna come out. This paint always right from the very get-go was kind of a cottage cheese texture, and I think it was called somewhere, yeah. Soft gel paint. It's jelly, all right, but I like the way it works. I think it works great. All right, let's give this a smear and see what we get. Already, I can tell you I like the colors. And I'm not getting like a huge puddle around my gel plate of, of paint. That's one of the signs that you're doing good as far as how much paint you're putting on. And there we go. Roll this off. And how about some texture? Look at this guy. Now I've never used it on a jelly plate, but it's very, this is very soft. It's, it's, um, it's not silicone, but it, it's rubbery. And it's supposed to be like to massage, but I thought this will be fun for a jelly plate. So let's just see what we get. Whoop, well, if it rolls, it rolls. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Just go with the flow. Let's see what that looks like. I like this newspaper because it's nice and thin. And I like thin when I'm working, I'll even use tissue paper if I, you know, find the need, or I'll use deli paper. Wax paper, it's not that it doesn't work good on the jelly plate. It does, but I find it hard to adhere when I go to use it. Gel mat medium will adhere it, but pretty much anything else, not so well. So, get the paint off of here. And we're going to just give this a bit of a roll. And I realize I have a green edge. I don't care. And let's pick this up. These are a little bit harder to show you because they're, it's so soft. Okay. And I'm going to go straight down. I'm grabbing a piece of paper. I'm going straight down with this again because it looks pretty wet. And 
It looks kind of cool. Now, this is a good craft to do when you have your work clothes on, your painty clothes on, because it does seem like it wants to go everywhere. Okay, I'm going to give this a roll again. Okay. Ready? And I'm getting newsprint again. Look, there's a photograph. And there is our print. Good. Good start. This is probably my least favorite of all the ones we've done so far, but that's okay. Now, I've got that newsprint on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go bypass all that newsprint. I've got this. Now, this was some kind of a flyer. Um, came from my library. And it is not shiny. So I cut it open and cut it apart. I'm going to go ahead and use some gesso on here and see if we can pick up the, the black ink from the newspaper. I'm gonna give this guy a roll just to get the wettest parts off. There we go. I'm not worried about it being stained. I'm gonna go right to the edge. Do you have a jelly plate? Do you use it? What sizes do you have? I, I want to get a smaller one because I like the idea of braring from a smaller one to the larger one. You really can get a nice, even, even coat. I don't think I do too bad, but you really get a nice, even coat that way. And there's, there's other good uses. All right, let's put this down. Ooh, did you see it slide? Just a little bit too much paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this set a minute and let's just talk. I'm going to go get my clamshell and show you what my jelly plate is. So this is my Ranger gel printing plate. As I said, I got it at Michael's. Um, and... They never had too many in stock at a time, but you could pretty much order it whenever you wanted. And again, I got this with one of those 50% off coupons when they were popular. But if you have a Michaels, a Joann's, a Hobby Lobby um, app on your phone, check that from time to time because there are unadvertised coupons like that still going on, just not as frequently as they used to be. But this is my jelly plate save your clamshell they all come with a clamshell because it keeps it nice and flat so I'm just sticking this back where it belongs and let's see how this is doing well it's definitely less slippery so the paint is ad adhering to the paper but I am purposely just kind of stalling for time because I want this to set just a little bit longer. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around the edge again and see if I can pick up that, some of this paint that's on the edge. See how slippery? Yep, I'm glad I'm picking that up. Cause that will build up and then it'll just kind of waterfall down onto your work surface. Okay, I think we did good with that. Let's pick it up, see what we got. There is a lot of paint on here, that's okay. I'm going right in and this paper that this paper that I'm using is probably the least absorbent of the paper, so that's why it left even more behind. It's okay, because trust me, when we go to do a second layer on these prints, that acrylic, <laughs> if you don't think that's slippery, think again. 
I've got some air bubbles in this. That's all right. If you find air bubbles, just rub over them, and they'll, that way they'll have a chance to pick up some paint. Sometimes braring helps with that. Sometimes it doesn't. I can feel the bubbles as I work the brayer over it. All right. Let's see. Definitely a harder pull. Now, some of this print looks like it went on there. A little bit, it sure did, that's okay. So this one just is really a pickup paper and it's gonna need more, but that's fine. Okay. I think we've kind of struggled with this enough. I'm going to go ahead and mist it with some water. Now you don't need to activate like the, the gel plate with water. As a matter of fact, that's probably not a good idea because you don't want your paints that wet. Sorry for my arms. But let's just give this a wipe. I'm obviously not getting the newsprint up. I'm not worried about it because if this won't take it up, it may end up being a stain for a little while that doesn't hurt the doesn't hurt the jelly plate one bit. Just it's just a stain. Most newspapers or anything printed in a newspaper style use a a vegetable type ink. So it's it's no longer a petroleum based product. So you're usually pretty okay. Pretty okay. Okay, am I getting this 100%? No, but the black. Well, it's not that it bothers me, but it's not clear enough to see. So I'm gonna try one more thing. Now, baby wipes are not necessarily recommended do as I say, not as I do, but I'm going to go ahead and use a baby wipe. But, you know, if it doesn't hurt a baby's butt, it's not touching it. That's okay, because again, that's just kind of tell me it probably won't come off. And now in case there is some chemical issue with my jelly plate and a baby wipe, I'm, I am going to hit it with some water. and I'm gonna hit it with the paper towel again. And then we're gonna be off to the races. And I know that I've used baby wipes on this before, but again, it's not recommended. It, I didn't really read anywhere where it said you shouldn't use them, but it, you know, I've read things like the only thing you should, you know, that kind of talk, so. Okay, there we go. Okay, next. Well, I'm just looking over. I have a lot of blues, a lot of greens, and a lot of pinks. So how about, do I have a purple? I'm going to have to rummage a little bit, but I believe so. Here's a purple. And maybe I'll take a silver with the purple. Now, I don't even know if this has been opened yet. Let's hope. Yep. And... Some of that purple jelly paint. That's strange, but works fine. I've used it for other projects, and it's it's fine. And this is just some silver. This is from Martha Stewart, and it came into a set of pearls and uh, pearls and metallics. And let's give this a roll. There's a new color, kind of an eggplant, huh? I like it. Little bit, um, my brayer's not rolling, it's sliding. So that tells me a little bit too much paint. That's all right, we'll just be careful. Now it's rolling, but it, it's too much. It, again, I'm not worrying about it. Okay, roll this off. That in itself will help. <laughs> Okay, what do I want to do? You know, I'm tempted to use a 
stencil, but I really rather use stencils the second time around. So I'm going to go back with a magazine sheet. Get it on there. Thank you, KDL Library. Do you use the library? I do. As a matter of fact, I upload most of my videos there because my library is right in the same campus as the um, City Hall, the Police Department, the Fire Department. It's all right there in my little town. Um, none of it's small, though. I mean, those these are big buildings, but they have uh, an open line that you can use for Internet, and it's fast. And there's no reason to believe it wouldn't be secure since when you consider who we're all sharing it with. So there we go. Let's pick this up. Love it. Absolutely love it. That is a really nice dark eggplant. And I am not going to even put any more paint on. I'm going to roll in what was left on the edge and see how I can kind of maneuver it this way. And then there's some up here. Maneuver it into the... And look, this really is the way this should have been. Okay. Well, I can't resist. One of my favorite stencils. What do you think? And now I'm going to grab one of the pinks. I'm going to put this one on it. And here we go. Now, I do have a bowl of water so that I can put this stencil right into some water when I'm done. But I'm not going to be done in a big hurry because I love this stencil. <laughs> but I don't want it to be clogged up with a lot of paint because it, uh, it has smaller openings and those smaller openings will be even smaller if I let acrylic paint just rest in it. Some people don't ever clean their stencils and I'll tell you the truth, it just depends on what the stencil looks like. Sometimes it's just not a good idea, but sometimes it's perfectly fine. Okay, let's see if we've got a Mandela kind of a thing. What do you think? How much would you pay for this piece of paper? I think it's beautiful. And I'm calling this one done. So it's going in a separate little area of done. Now, I'm picking up another one that isn't exactly my favorite. But I'm going to pick this up. And I'm just going to set it aside for right this minute. And put this down. Now, will it show? I don't know. I don't know. It's just an experiment. But it can't make it any worse. <laughs> oh, heavens. If you hear voices, if you hear noises, they're painting the outside of my building. They're painting the whole thing. And it's, it's really coming along nice. Yesterday they did the um, washing, you know, the power washing, and today they're painting. They painted my balcony and it just looks so pretty. Okay. What have we got? Oh, I ripped it. That's a good sign that it's picking up. And this is picking up. See, this a paper is very absorbent. And let go, let go, let go. There we go. It's nice. But it's got a lot of busyness from what's under it. I don't hate it. Needs more. Okay. Now, my stencil. What I'm going to do with it is I'm going to take another sheet of this newsprint. 
and I've got that upside down on my jelly plate. So the paint of the stencil is facing you and me. And then the paper is on the paint, but where it's touching the jelly board, there's really not much there. And again, will we get something wonderful? I don't know, but it's not gonna hurt. So let's just see what we get. Okay. So it isn't stuck to the jelly plate and it's really stuck to the, see, we're just gonna go for it. Now that paper will come off when I get this into some water. Yeah, <laughs> not much there, that's okay. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put this down in some water. It's, the stencil is a little bigger than my bowl, so I'm just submerging it a little bit. I'll move it around from time to time. <laughs> okay, I'm just grabbing a paper towel because my hands are wet. Okay, got a lot of newsprint happening here, but doesn't seem to do much, so I'm not going to worry about it. All right, so what do we want to do with this gel plate now? Mm, I think I think I'm going to go for this crimson red. Now, one thing about red, it can really give a specific vibe. Now, to me, this is a very warm red, like a brick red. But just depending on what you put with it, it can want to look like Christmas in a hurry or Valentine's Day. So I'm just careful with red. I use it, I love it, but for something like this, I'm just careful. If you mix it with almost any green, you're gonna get a Christmas look. If you're making Christmas tags, Christmas wrapping paper, this is your friend. But right now it's July. If I was making a 4th of July uh, tablecloth or something, perfect, perfect. Okay, I'm going to put this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change gears from what I was thinking. I'm gonna put this bubble wrap on it. Now you put the bubble wrap on with the bubbles down. Just lay this on, give it a rub, and it's gonna pick up paint. I'm not pressing too hard just so that it has a good contact. Okay, and let's see what we've got. The texture is there. I don't know if you can see it, but the texture is definitely there. And we're gonna put the library on it. And here we go. Now I didn't quite get the bottom in a way, that can be good because it can make it just a little bit easier to pull. But I really, if I have my druthers, I would rather get the whole get the whole thing on. All right, let's pick this up and see. This is picking up quite nicely. And there's our bubble wrap texture. It looks good. Okay, I've got another. This is one that I tried to do the stencil on. And I'm going to go ahead and see about picking up some more of this red on here. That's good. Pick it up from here. And that's good. Pick it up from here. And what you're seeing in the ghosting here, it's where the library text isn't, it's resisting the, um, the paint. Okay, now, round two. This is pretty busy. 
The red's going to show. So I want to pick something to put with it. That red will be okay. All right, I think I've got one in mind. So on this, I'm going to put some yellow. Just some plain old yellow. I don't want to get too much because now I'm going to be working on paper that already has acrylic. This is a nice sunny yellow. My brayer is rolling really nice. Brayers are not cheap. And you know what? It's worth it. If you buy a cheap one, honestly, you'll be more frustrated than anything. So get yourself a good brayer. You, you, it's worth it. And, and it's not that much more. You know, instead of paying maybe $5.99, you're going to pay $9.99. I think that's what I paid for this one. It was just about $10. Okay, I'm going to go grab a sheet. Okay. Oh, oh no. One stuck to my foot, and I don't want to walk this color all over my carpet. Okay. I think we're safe. Let's see. Sorry. Sorry, it's taken me a moment, but okay, I'm good. All right. What do I want to do with that, though? It's just going to be solid yellow. Oh, go for it. See what we get. Sorry about that pause, but I really, I stepped in that eggplant and it, I stepped in it enough that it's the paper stuck to my foot and I'm barefooted and I just really did not want to walk that all around the house. Okay. Got some wrinkles and some bubbles. I'm just going to give it a brayer. Here the... I don't know if you can hear them, but some of the air did go away right there. I'm chasing it right off. There we go. Okay. When it makes that little kind of sound, that's the air that's trapped. Here we go. Oh, this is a nice pull. Hey. Hey. I like this. Yes, I do. Uh-huh. Okay. Set it down. That's two that, in my opinion, are done. Okay. I'm done with this, and I'm going to go ahead and throw it in this bowl because my stencil is just floating, and I don't want that. Okay. I'm going to take some green. This is a very... Light pearly green. And I'm going to brayer this on. Can you see the pearliness? I went more stingy, but that's okay. I did that on purpose because... Again, what's on what we're going to be putting this with is already got one coat of acrylic. Okay, got a stencil. I'm just going to lay it on here like that. And I've got a nice dark, dark, dark one. And we'll see if that shimmer shows up on the dark. It's this one, it's got shimmer too. All right, let's give it a rub. Are you enjoying this? If you are, please consider hitting the like. And if you really like it, please consider hitting the subscribe. It helps my brand new channel so much. I've been doing videos now for maybe three months, somewhere between two and three months. And I'm getting ready to have a giveaway. I have 
the last I looked was 72 subscribers. When we hit 100, I'm having a giveaway. So you'll really want to hit the, the subscribe and hit a bell so that you get notified every time I upload. And that way you'll be able to participate in the giveaway. Yay! Okay, what are we going to get? Hey, hey, hey! I'm liking this. What do you think? Looks nice, huh? That one's done. I have to tell you, it's not that often that I have done this quick. I don't want that one. I want this one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the stencil. And then I'm going to put this one on top. It's, it's mostly a, a green one that I rake the comb over. I'm definitely going to be cutting up more of that craft paper. I really like it for this. And it makes it worth it. Because I can cut it the size of my plate and everything. But use what you have. Junk mail. You know, I've got this crazy stuff from the that was just dropped off a newspaper that I'm not even sure what it's about. And I didn't even look at it. Okay, so you can see the shimmer of it. That's nice. There's nothing wrong with that. On a collage, that could look good. But I'm not going to call it done. Okay. Boy, this is just getting darker and darker. And that's from that newspaper. I'm going to... I'm not so worried about this one if the acrylic paint dries on it. Not like I was with the Mandela style. But I am going to just put it in the water. Okay. All right. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this another coat of, let's give it a shake, gesso. Just a little. And I'm going to add... A light color. I'm looking at what we already have. And I think I'm going to add some, I'm sorry, I don't like to be this undecided. This. This is a cool color. Um, cadmium yellow deep hue. It kind of reminds me of a yellow ochre. It's very transparent. Again, this is another one of those that I got from Tuesday morning. I don't even know. I mean, after I bought these, Tuesday morning closed down a lot of their stores in Michigan. I, there is one here where I live, but I'm not even sure quite where it is. Since I moved and my craft room is much smaller, I, uh, I'm really not buying a lot of supplies. The, the stuff I need day in and day out, yes, but not a lot. I like this. That gesso is just so slippery. My brayer is sliding and not rolling. Now it's rolling. Yep. Just took a minute. And let's let's uncover this a little bit. There. Okay, and I'm going to drop another texture on top, and this is a potato bag, and I'm going to grab a sheet. This is the one that stuck to my foot, and let's give this a rub. Now, I'm, I'm not going to get a lot because there's two areas that are blocked by the labeling, but it's still gonna make a cool stripe on there. And I'm interested just to see how that looks. Give it a, a brayer because that's a fine texture on there. All right. Look, what do you think? I love it, yay. That's a pretty texture. Okay, I've got this other pickup sheet. 
and I'm just going to set it on here and see if we can pick up some more of this yellow. The gesso makes such an opaque paint, whatever paint you're using, and that's why I think that yellow just is screaming on top of that purple, and I just think it's, it's gorgeous. All right. Good. This is a good cleanup. Yep. Okay. Look. Good. Okay. So we've got quite a bit of yellow on here. And I've got this orange. Let's put some of this orange on here. And I'm looking at what will we put orange with. I've got one that's almost white. We can see what that will do. Going thin. Maybe I'll add just a drop of gold. Just a little bit. And let's see. There's a, there, it came right off. Good. It's like a piece of dried paint. There we go. And those things happen because you want to use up, you know, use up paints that are getting that way. And you don't want to grind those little bits into your jelly plate. You don't want to puncture your jelly plate. But it would take an awful lot to do that. I'm not grinding my brayer into this. But you do rub, you know, when you're rubbing the paper on it. That for sure. It's orange is just forever, huh? Okay. Now, I've got this white, and it's almost just entirely white. So what am I going to do? Well, we could go again with bubble wrap. Will some of that red paint come off? Maybe. Does that bother me? Nope. Totally fine with me. Okay. And I don't think we lost any of that red paint. And now let's get this almost white one and put it on. Orange is another color that can feel so specific. Halloween and fall and pumpkins and lattes and cider mills and you know that whole that whole vibe but it doesn't have to just depending on what other colors you match it up with when you're in the desert southwest and I lived in Tucson for years orange and bright colors with orange were very common and I loved it the influence from Mexico, you know, Tucson is only about 50, 60 miles from the Mexican border. And wow, you can get some beautiful art. Okay. It is very, very textury. I see the bubble wrap, but not a whole lot. And what this is here, I have no idea. But I'm okay with it. Let's let it dry. Now I've got this red sheet, and I think what I'm going to do is see if I can just roll any of this around. I don't think so. So let's get, I'm not going to use gesso. I'm going to use acrylic paint this time. Some white. Is this open? Yes. Oh, maybe not. Maybe that was just the seal. No, it's open. Okay, and you are getting in my way, buddy. That looks textury, doesn't it? Oh, it's smoothing out. I like the way it's picked up the orange, kind of a 
turned it into kind of a melon color. Uh huh. It's good. Very nice. Okay. And I'm grabbing my Punchinella. And the piece um, that I'm working on has circles already. It has the bubble wrap, but we're going to give it some more circles. I can hear a truck backing up, if you can hear that beep, beep, beep. I never know what you can hear. So we're almost at an hour, and I don't want to stress you out by just lingering on forever and ever. So we're going to be wrapping this up pretty soon here. We don't have that many more that I wish to put more on. And you know, if you're running out of time, you're running out of time. There's nothing... Just do what you got to do. Live your life. But for those of you who are here and sticking it out with me, I am so grateful. All right. Can we give this a roll? And let's see what we got. If that isn't pretty, I don't know what pretty is. That is gorgeous. Okay. Thank you, Punchinella. I like what you did. We can take these off. This is another thing that it, it they don't get ruined by paint. And I'm grabbing another one. Let's see. This one, orange and green. That says fall, doesn't it? But let's see if we can pick up some more of this orange. I really want to give this a good press. Be great if I could pick this up and say, oh, done. Be wonderful. We'll just have to see. You'll have to let me know if you are on Instagram or Facebook and if there's a way that I can see what you're doing, that would be great. I have a Facebook page. It's Julie Ann Torrens. So you can find me there, but I would love to see your artwork. Look, I like this texture. I think that could be so pretty in a nature, definitely. All right, I'm calling that one done. And really, I only have a couple that we need to do a little more with, so. Let's see. Let's give it a go. All right. I'm just going to leave this like it is. And I'm looking and I need some darker colors. So let's go again with this eggplant. Well, you know, I have a huge bowl of paint. Why would I need to do something twice? I know we did ultramarine. I'm sorry for my arm. How about this? Brown. And with the orange on here? That could look nice. Let's just open it up. These tend to block. Yeah, there we go. Never discount a good brown. Here we go. There's a ladder. Pretty close. So if you hear a thump or a Thud. Don't be scared. It's just the painters. Ooh, right off the edge. Oh, right off the edge again. I'm trying to get the, the orange on the edge because I like it. Especially with this brown. There's a globby of brown paint right there. All right. Well, let's not worry about it. All right. Roll off the brown. And... What are we going to do for texture? Okay, this is going to take just a little bit of work, but we're going to do it. This is a rubber stamp. So what I'm going to do is just rubber stamp and then stamp it off because what I'm doing is lifting paint. So put it on and here 
and put it on and here put it on and it's it's not a perfect science not by any stretch of the imagination this first one really didn't do much so I'm gonna try it again <laughs> there and one more my bowl is in the way well we'll do it like this okay grab a sheet This is that white one that just keeps staying white. Let's see if we can do anything with it. And now while this is on here, grabbing up the paint, I wanna just hit this because I don't want acrylic paint to linger on my rubber stamp. I'm just gonna hit it with some water and then just do like this and see. And you know, that fills in the details if you just let that be. I know there are people that never clean their stamps, they never clean their stencils. I, It's fine, I mean, it's their things, but I, I don't know how they keep working. But they do. Okay. I think that's fine. It'll have to be. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Well, definitely we got the white gone. The checkerboard is subtle, but it's definitely there. Okay. We may not get through all of these, but I've got one more that I want to do. Well, two more really, but one more for sure. And I am going to hit this with, I, I don't really mind the brown. I'm going to give it just a tiny bit more brown. Oh, Julie, can you remember anything? I have a head like a sieve. There, just a little. Oh, Julie. Oh, Julie. Okay. This may not even give us a complete coating, and that's okay. Kind of looks like an animal print, doesn't it? I think it's all coming back onto my brayer. I really do. All right. I'm going to give it a little bit of gesso. Just a touch. Okay, let's get a paper. And it's this one. Let's make a design on it. It feels pretty dry but we'll just have to see. Give it a good roll. We're over an hour, I'm sorry. Once you get set up though, whew, you wanna keep going, don't you? Okay, lift it up. And it gave it a nice texture. I, I don't mind this. I think, again, to tear this and, and create like florals or a lady's dress, I just think this could be gorgeous. I'm happy with that. Okay. Well, we're going to call that a wrap. It's a wrap on that. So I'm going to clean this up and clean my brayer up. But in the meantime, thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like subscribe, share with your friends. I will be looking for you in my next video. Bye.